All right, guys. So these are, I'm calling them jam chucks. Surely there's something else they can be called because they do actually clamp. Anyway, these are the chucks that I make so that I can turn spoons. And it, you make a chuck for each size spoon you want to make when you do it this way. Someone else, I'm sure, has done this before. I've never seen it done quite like this by anyone else. I'm sure I'm not the first one to do it though. I'm going to show you how I make these and then we're going to turn a spoon. What I've got here is a piece of pine. I usually use softer woods for this stuff. My, my thought is I need it to be able to move and clamp down on the, on the spoon bowl. So anyway, this is a three inch by three inch piece of pine and right now my biggest concern is just making this round. So. I'm going to make this round and and then I'll start talking again. So we're round and I plan on making a two inch outside diameter bold spoon. So I want to double check, make sure I got enough meat here. I'm looking for as close to three inches as I can get and I've got two and seven eighths here. So I'm going to cut this in half but before I do I'm going to turn a tenon right here so that I can grab this with a chuck. Now I have a two inch Forstner bit. Alright, I want to check my depth. I need to be minimum one inch deep. I need to be half of whatever this diameter is. I am one and an eighth. So I actually want to go a little bit more and then trim it to fit if I need to. I want this thing to be able to expand and contract as I need it to. So in order for it to do that, it has to be open in the center all the way through and then we'll make a curve cut a couple of curve cuts to give it some room to move so I'm gonna do a three-quarter inch drill bit all the way through into the core of the chuck here. we got a two inch hole and a three-quarter inch through hole and a uh, tendon for the squirrel chuck but this needs to be straight enough so that you can use it to register at the edge of the teeth of your chuck. So now we'll split this thing, take a little bit extra material out so this thing can open and close when we put it in the chuck. Now I need to make a relief on either side, just a curved shape relief like this. So, here's what we have. This chuck will work for a two inch spoon. We got room for a handle to stick out right here. Now we're probably gonna have to trim this down. So what I'll do is I'll get the spoon blank turned and then we'll stick it in this thing and see where this needs to come out. We'll go over the details on that when I get to that point. This is a piece of ash. It is a uh, two and an eighth square by some arbitrary number long. I got nine inches. First order of business is get this round. And I need minimum two inches here exactly two inches in diameter or slightly over so that I can sand down to two inches. So we're going to define this with a parting tool. Alright, so the goal now is to turn 
as close to a perfect sphere as I can right here. And I'm gonna use this right here to, this little tool I made out of quarter inch plywood. What I did with this, I just took the same Forstner bit that I used to make my chuck, drilled a hole in this piece of plywood, and then on the bandsaw I cut it, cut a handle on it, and this is a little bit less than half of that that hole I cut. And I'll use this like this and this to check the diameter. What I'm doing, I'm checking it. <coughs> I'm checking it like this, and I've got a little bit of a gap left in here. And I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on this to fine tune it. So that little bit of a gap is okay. But what I'm looking, I'm looking at how big my gap is going across center, and then I'll rotate it this way. That gap should be pretty much the same all the way. And it is. So this, that's closer to a perfect sphere than I think I've ever turned. That is, that is really close. So I'm going to go ahead and shape the handle now. Alright, so I got this sanded up to 320. It doesn't really need to go too much further than that. Alright, so I'm going to take this to the bandsaw. I'm going to clip off the waste. And I'll shove it in the sander. Sand all this smooth. And I'll come back. We got the uh, spoon fitted into the chuck. And you can see right here. I cut this length off so that it's about even with this surface of the handle. The other thing I do is my kerf cut I put in between two teeth in the scroll chuck. That way I can see it closing down a little bit plus I think in the middle it has a tendency to grab it and not let this gap close. I could be totally wrong about that but I like seeing it tighten up. I'm going to reset the camera where you can kind of see what I'm doing. And we'll start hollowing out the bowl of this spoon. There's going to be a little lip right here around this edge of this bowl. And I want to get it almost flush with this front face of the handle here. And I don't know if you can tell from the shot, but I've got the tool rest back here is angled away kind of got it turned this way so that I can rest my arm on this tool rest to control this tool and know that I'm out of the way of this handle. Alright that looks good. Now I'm going to start hollowing out. I believe this to be the scariest part of this process. What I usually do to sand the insides of these things is fold my sandpaper up on itself and then roll it like that. And the only thing I'm going to be able to see is the ghost image of this handle swinging around. That's all I'm going to be able to see of the handle. So I have to have a mental image of where not to put my hands. I mean, you can kind of see it, but you damn sure don't want to get hit by it. Alright, so you get the idea. 
I'm gonna flip the camera off, get the inside of this thing sanded up, and we'll come back and take a little bit closer look at it. All right, so this is the finished spoon. I don't have finish on it yet. Um, I will probably go put actual cooking oil on this. This spoon's not perfect. I was a little bit off. This edge right here is slightly thinner than the rest of it. If you turn a spoon this way, any inconsistency in this lip comes from an imperfection in the sphere shape you turn in the beginning. So this one is really, really clear. This is the closest one to a perfect sphere I've ever turned. Also, one thing I should have done that I didn't do, the measurement from the center of the sphere to the end of the handle has to be smaller than the uh, spread on your, on your lathe. <laughs> and I didn't take that into account, so now I have a funky shape down here. But the handle's still long enough to fit comfortably in my hand, and I have big fat sausage hands. So it's still decent enough sh length, just the shape isn't what I wanted. But this isn't a failure, it's just not perfect. But I'll take this upstairs and I'll put some cooking oil on it. And I'll use it for coffee or something. I appreciate you watching this. Um... You can find me on Facebook at GP Woodworks. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do. I try to put out a video every week. Um, but I do work a full-time job, so I, sooner or later I'm going to miss a week. Thanks again. I don't want I don't want to risk getting my arm in here with it spinning obviously because then I would possibly break the handle off my spoon <laughs>